Dot. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Tip Tut. Today we're taking a look at how to recreate this mandala artwork. Uh, I'm just sketching up the initial design now. Essentially you draw half of a triangle's worth of content and then you can duplicate it around a circle inside of Illustrator. So watch this quick time lapse of me doing the sketch and then we'll jump right in. Okay, so we have finished sketching up our piece of artwork here and I've just brought that into Illustrator now um, and we're going to have to create our dodecahedron in order to turn this into an actual mandala rather than half of one, which is what it is at the moment. To do that, we need to go over to our rectangle tool and just click and hold until it comes to the polygon tool. From here I've got a roughly um, square print canvas and I'm just going to left click and I'm going to choose 12 sides on my shape and I'm going to go for about 100 mil in size. It doesn't really matter what that size is though, to be honest. Let's just click, click and drag that so it goes to the center of the page and you can see that we've got our... Um, outline of our dodecahedron. We now need to isolate a single triangle from which we are then going to rotate that around and create our mandala. So I'm going to go up to my pen tool and I'm going to take the leftmost top point and I'm just going to go down to the center of my dodecahedron and create another point there. And then I'm going to create a final point on the top right point of our dodecahedron. Now this is going to create the triangle that if we were to just repeat this all the way around, we'd have 12 segments. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. We actually only need one of them to start off with though. So I'm going to select both of those shapes and I'm going to go over to uh, my Pathfinder tool and I'm just going to choose Divide. What this does is it separates those two shapes out um, and if we ungroup them, we'll be able to delete the remainder of our dodecahedron and we'll have one portion ready to go. Okay, now we need to rotate this um, in order to duplicate those sections. However, the most important step is turning this into a symbol. And what this means is when we edit this instance of the symbol, all the other instances of it will be edited as well. So the first step is to select your triangle, go to Window, Symbols, and just hit New. Call it whatever you want. I'm going to call this one Slice and we've got our symbol ready to go. Now when we duplicate this, uh, any changes we make inside this symbol will be made on all instances of that symbol. Pop over to view outline so that you know you've got the very center of your point that you need to rotate it from and grab your rotate tool. First of all though, make sure you've got your shape selected. With the rotate tool selected, zoom all the way in and being, being as accurate as you can, just click on the last final below point of that dodecahedron okay now just a left click will create the rotation point there but what we actually want to do is alt click this and what that does is it brings up more options for the rotate tool so holding down alt you can see we have three dots next to our little cursor there now if we then click on that rotation point it brings up the rotation angle that we want to choose for this it will be 30 because 360 divided by 12 is 30 30 degrees. We want to hit copy on that. And that creates, as you can see, a copy of our slice, which is perfect. Go back to view GPU preview, and then using the duplicate last option, which is control D, we can duplicate this all the way around until our dodecahedron is complete. So now whatever we do inside of that symbol will be reflected in the rest of the symbols here. For example, if I double click on this, we'll get a um, message saying you're about to edit the symbol definition. Any edits will be applied to all list instances, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want to do. If I were to draw a shape inside here, for example, then drop out of the symbol, it will be replicated all the way around. Okay, so the only thing left to do is to grab our image with Control X to cut and then Control V to paste inside the symbol. We can push that down to the bottom and we can reduce its opacity like so. Okay, from here, you just need to trace over your image again. Now you could have done without the sketching part or you could try um, image tracing this but I like the way it looks when you use the blob brush tool to fix it so I'm going to do that. I'm just going to position it up so that our sketching artwork here takes up roughly half of our triangle. Okay to help guide that what you can actually do is grab your pen tool and starting from the bottom anchor point holding shift you can go up to where that path intersects give that a little um, bit of a stroke and use these 
as some guiding lines for your artwork. I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. So all I'm gonna do now is start drawing this in with the blob brush tool. Now I've got a Wacom tablet to do this with, but you can do it with a mouse if you were careful um, because the blob brush and the paint brush tool are really good for drawing these sort of smooth lines. It smooths them out really well for you. Okay, I'm gonna give it a go with just the um, blob brush. It's probably not gonna be small enough actually. So let me try it with the paint brush tool where I can go a little bit smaller. Uh, that could be okay. Let's do that. Right, I'm just going to fast forward through this then, and I'm literally just going to start colouring these shapes in. Okay, now it's important to know that anywhere where you do go over this central or outside line, that is going to be duplicated outside of your shapes. So there'll be some overlapping. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It could be the intention of your um, drawing to do that. Um, however, it is important that when you do have those decisions made, they are made on purpose. For example, this is going to get duplicated because it goes over the central line. important to note as well if um, you want to you're not stuck to the sketch that you made at this point you can obviously make changes some of those shapes down below I reposition them slightly redraw the curves slightly that sort of thing it's literally up to you as so long as you stay inside your um, lines on the left and right the angles then you should be totally fine with changing any aspect of the design you want the good thing is to bear in mind is that it reflects from the middle. So if you were to draw a semicircle like so, that would actually end up being a circle in the final design. If you were to draw a semicircle like so, it would end up being an X. Those are sort of things that you should take into account when you're actually drawing your, uh, your final pieces. Okay, so I've finished drawing my shapes in now. The only thing left to do is to scroll down to the bottom here, unlock my guides and image layers, and just get rid of those, which leaves us with only the artwork. Um, now, if you wanted to, you could probably, thinking about it, actually leave in the center guide for now, um, just so it'll help you align the next piece of artwork, but make sure you leave it locked if you do. Select everything you've just drawn, you can group it if you want to, and then hit Ctrl C, Ctrl F to duplicate that in place. Go to Object, Transform, Reflect, and make it reflect vertically. You can put the preview on and hit OK. Now just push that over to the other side and zoom in right in. You're going to want to bring this into alignment until it's back in the center where it was before. So something like that. The best way to tell whether it is in the center is to find a piece that intersects with the outside lines and make it roughly match up. Doesn't matter if it's not 100%. So you can see already where this is starting to go. Okay, let's hide or at least delete our um, guideline and drop out of our symbol to reveal the final pattern. And there you go, that is all there is to it. It is an incredibly, incredibly powerful tool that they've built inside of Illustrator, this sort of duplicate symbol. Um, brilliant for doing the mandala and makes it so easy and fun to do. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, guys. If you did, let me know if you want more of this sort of thing. Um, and hopefully I can find out some other cool ways to do stuff like this in the future. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I do hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you all next time on TipTap. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.